Welcome to Preaching That Matters. A place you can find apostolic Pentecostal preaching. A place where all generations can be fed with the Word of God. We hope you enjoy. Whatever He wants to do today, that's what we want, okay? And uh, so, uh, you know, at the end of the service, let's just, let's not make the preacher have to beg us to come today. It doesn't mean that we're joining the church if you're visiting or anything like that. We're just coming because we want the presence of God to move in our hearts today. Amen? Praise the Lord. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. Verse 6, And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. Verse 9, And God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas, and God saw that it was good. For just a few minutes today, I want to preach to you on the subject, the power of light in the darkness. The power of light in the darkness. Would you lay your Bibles down and just raise your hands towards heaven and let's ask God to speak to our hearts today. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for every promise. We thank you for your presence that we feel here in this house today. I pray, God, that your spirit would minister in us. Have your way in our hearts, God. Let your anointing move freely here today. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We need your help here this morning in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. I feel something good in this place today. I feel, a, I feel the presence of the Lord here this morning. Praise the Lord. God bless you. You may be seated. What we call light is really the same thing as the radiation we call radio waves or gamma rays. But what we use the term light to describe is the portion of the electromagnetic spectrum that is in the form of visible light. Visible light is unlike any other element in the universe. Visible light directly and dramatically interacts with our senses. Light sways our moods. The abundance of light or the lack thereof can make us cheerful or grumpy. And, and you have to have light to grow food. You have to have light to, to see where you walk. You've got to have light to, to be able to work and, and to make it through this life. A powerful thing light is. Our eyes have about 125 million rods and cones, specialized cells to help us detect light. About one-fifth of our brains does nothing but, but try to, to adapt to the visual world around us. So much information is carried by visible light that almost everything from a fly to a whale has a way to capture light through eyes or something that is similar. It is light that wakes us up in the morning. It's light that guides us through the day. It's light that gives us colors and, and contrast. Light that gives us enjoyment of the scenery around us. Light is a powerful thing. And to think all of this became possible when God said, Let there be light. Praise the Lord. For at that time, it was a dense and black darkness that hovered over the face of the deep. 
The murky and restless and choppy waters saturated the globe. The prevailing darkness and the overwhelming amount of water made everything void and without shape or form. The record of Moses set forth in Genesis chapter 1 gives us a very bleak picture of this earth at the beginning. There was nothing of value, or so it appeared. There was no signs of a future and nothing in the way of hope, or so it appeared. Who would want such a place? Who would desire such a massive ball of, of muddy water blanketed with darkness? It was ugly and it was cold and it was lifeless. Was there anything of worth in this 24,000 plus mile circumference of the earth? Was there anything of value? Oh, you just thought Ezekiel's dry valley of bones was bad. I tell you, what about this earth at the beginning? If we could have viewed the earth at this stage, we would have seen no potential and no hope. It was all waste. But oh, today, I tell you, sometimes the things of value come out of those things which seem to have no potential. Oh, come on, who am I preaching to this morning? That you may look at your life, you may look at your situation, at your circumstance, and there seems like there isn't any hope. It seems like there's no potential, but God desires to work through you. And when God begins to work, it's not us, it's not our talent, it's not our ability, but it's the power and the strength of God. Oh, I tell you, God sometimes likes to choose the rough situation, the impossible circumstance, because when it all comes out in the end, everybody knows it wasn't me, it wasn't my talent, it wasn't my ability, but it was the power of God. Only the power of God could have made a way in my life. I tell you, we're his today. We're his today. This church is his this morning. It's not my church. It's not the pastor's church. But this is God's church. And God can make a way where there seemeth to be no other way. And when it all comes out, we know it was the hand of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Who would want such a place? It was in the year of 1800. Secretary of State William Seward had served under President Abraham Lincoln. and He had just purchased Alaska from Russia for an astronomical amount of $7,200,000 at that time. It became known as Seward's Folly. In the view of the world, William Seward had just wasted $7.2 million on a piece of ice. However, there was discoveries made later. And as it turns out, Seward's folly was not such a waste after all. Today, over $7.2 million worth of value comes out of that investment each and every day. There was value, there was wealth in that large piece of earth called Alaska. It just had to be discovered. And in the beginning, to look at this earth from the surface, you wouldn't know it. But layered beneath the darkness, beneath the water and the mud, it, there was soil there and soil that could grow crops, soil that could grow vegetation, soil that could grow trees. It was all there buried under a prevailing darkness and beneath oceans of waters. Besides that, there were metals, iron to manufacture cars and build railroads lying there within the earth, tin and ore and bronze. There was gold in the mines and silver in the walls and crevices of rocks and caves. There beneath the mud and the darkness was to be found diamonds and rubies. The wealth, oh, such wealth was there. The potential was incredible mind-boggling to think about but in the beginning it looked like nothing on the surface 
everything that was needed to support a race of people was to be found there in the darkness. Everything needed to build a city with skyscrapers, all of the wire to connect everything with power lines and all of the necessary rock to connect people in the cities, in the countryside with roads, the necessary materials to build ships, to cross the oceans, the things to build airplanes for air travel. All of that was lying there beneath the body of our globe along with the oil to fuel it all. All lying there in the void and the chaos, waiting for an outside force to interrupt the darkness and cause it to be. And then it happened. The Spirit of the Lord began to move and and it hovered over the face of the deep, uh, over those black depths. Uh, I tell you today no matter how black uh, or no matter how dense, uh, no matter how deep the waters, uh, it was not too much uh, to be affected by the moving of the Spirit. Uh, It was not too black. It was not too thick. uh, It was not too deep uh, to be affected by the moving of the Spirit of God uh, because God was at work and His Spirit hovered uh, and breathed over this great earth and God said let there be light and when God spoke something happened it had never been before it had never been dreamed of before but all of a sudden God said let there be light and there was light I tell you today, when God moved, something uh, happened. Uh, When God spoke, uh, something began to change. Uh, That situation was not the same anymore, uh, but the world became different. Uh, The transformation took place because God spoke the word. Let there be light, and there was light. The world began to take order and shape and and darkness was receding and and land was appearing and soil began producing uh, animals and fruit and vegetation began to cover the earth and birds and other creatures began to uh, come alive and all because of God. I tell you this morning, we owe everything to God. We owe everything uh, to God. We may get busy and not take the time to think about it very often, uh, but we owe everything to Him. Uh, We would not be alive uh, without His moving. Uh, We would not be here today uh, without Him speaking the Word. Uh, We've got to remember as we go through life, uh, we didn't get here by ourselves. Uh, We didn't set things into motion on our own, uh, but it was the work of an Almighty God, uh, and He is in control today come on you didn't put yourself in that life by yourself you didn't get that job on your own you didn't have that house just on your own but it was the hand of God it was the work of God we're here today because of him Oh, I don't want to ever, ever forget. I'm here because of God. I drive the car I have because of God. I have the money I have because of God. I have the house and a family and the blessings because it was God that gave me those things. Oh, maybe you think this preacher on a Sunday morning from Texas is a little crazy, but I'm just thankful for the blessings of God. I'm thankful for His touch. I'm thankful for the life that He's given me. It's not ours, but it was His. He's blessed us with it today. There was two major forces that were alive and active in creation. The Word of God and the Spirit of God. When those two forces began to move and begin to act, that was when the change took place. The darkness was pushed away and and, and light began to shine. Before, it, it was just a void. It was just chaos and it was just a mess. But when the Word of God spoke and the Spirit of God began to move, things changed. They went from disorder to order. They went from chaos to creation. They went from darkness to light. That doesn't just happen by itself. You just take a garage. That garage doesn't go from just disorder to order. It's the other way around. You can clean that thing and organize it and put everything up just right. and You just give it a week or two and it goes from order to disorder. 
but oh with God he, he spoke the word and he began to move and everything went from chaos to order and creation I tell you today your life may be a chaotic mess but what you need is for the spirit of God to begin to move what you need is for the word of God to be preached and for God to make order of it all you can't fix it today. You can't work it all out today. But the hand of God, when he begins to move, he can fix anything. He can change any heart. He can touch any mind. He can heal anybody. Hallelujah. And those two forces that were active during creation are still active today. The Word and the Spirit. We've got to have them both got to have the Word of God and we've got to have the Spirit of God. I tell you today, the Word of God is still alive. It's still powerful. This book may have been written over 2,000 years ago, but it's alive and it's meaningful and it has a resource that no other book in this world could ever offer. And we need the Spirit of God today because there's got to be a change in us. There's too much darkness in this world. There's too much trouble and, oh, too much chaos and mess. We need for God to have his way. We need for his word to be spoken. We need for his spirit to move on us. It's not, oh, what can I do to you today, but what can the spirit of God do in your heart and do in your life this morning? We've got to have his spirit and we've got to have his word. And that's why it's so important be faithful to church. Amen. Forsake not the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is and even the more so so much the more as you see the day approaching. Praise the Lord. I tell you today there's a reason why we need to come to church. There's a reason why we need to be faithful to the house of God because we've got to be where his spirit is. We go through week all, all the week long and, and we deal with people and we deal with problems and trouble and circumstance. Sometimes we, we've got to get away from it all and get to a place where His Spirit is so His Spirit can begin to move in our life and can begin to put the chaos back into order and put the trouble and fix it in our lives. We've got to come to a place where we can hear the preaching of the Word of God. I tell you, the Word of God is quick. It's powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. Sometimes it's not very comfortable, but we need the Word of God to begin to touch our heart and begin to cut away some things and deal with the problems in our life. Some may think revival just happened. Miracles just happen by chance, that, that problems just get solved on their own, but things are still the same as they were at creation. In order for those things to take place, it takes a moving of God's Spirit, and it takes the preaching of His Word. I tell you, there's a darkness of the world that's closing in on the church. 1 John 5.19 tells us the whole world lieth in wickedness. Yet today I want to tell you there's a power, a power that can prevail against the world of darkness and sin. We've got to pray that the light of truth would shine. We need the light today. We've got to have his spirit to move on our behalf. We've got to have his word to speak to our lives today. Just look at the people who would come to this church. Their lives are covered with sin and they're in the midst of the destruction of the enemy. They've been overwhelmed by, by uh, just the darkness of this age and, and, and covered with, with the trouble of their past. And, and oh, they have talent, they have skills and ability, uh, but right now they're under the power and the control of the force of sin. But the Word of God and the Spirit of God can still work. 
I tell you today, there's no person that has gone too far that God cannot work in their life. There is no one person today that has messed up too much for God to put the pieces back together again. But oh, I tell you, the Word of God and the Spirit of God still have power. Deliverance can still happen. Amen. Salvation can still take place. Conversion can still come to pass. Those souls of those who are lost, they're under the black evil of sin. But what they need is for the light of truth to begin to shine in their life, to begin to put the pieces back together again. And such were some of you. Oh, but now we're washed, we're sanctified, we're justified in the name of Jesus, and we have had his light of truth shine in us. This generation can't save itself. It's going to take God. It takes him. And so most of you here today, if not all, have come to that place that you realized it's too big for me to handle. It's too much for me to figure out, but God, I need your help. And so I submit my life to you. I tell you, this world is it's full of, of resources, of wealth and value. This earth is unmatched. No other planet can come close to this old world. No other place in this universe can sustain life that we found. And, and no, oh, but all that this earth is, all of its resources and all of its beauty, all of that is realized because of the moving of the Spirit and because of the Word of God. And if God can work in this earth, then He can work in our hearts. And He can work in our lives. And in our community and in the life of every human being. There just has to be an openness to the Word of God. There has to be an opportunity for His Spirit to work. Oh, I ask you today, would you open your life for the hand of God to move upon you, for God to lead you, not in your goals and dreams, but Lord, what do you have in store for my life? The power of light in the dark. John chapter 1 and verse 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. And reading on, we find out that he was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. And on that faithful day at Golgotha, when darkness advanced and did everything it could to overtake the light, Yet victory was won for all eternity. And on the third day, Jesus rose from the grave. And he's alive forevermore. And he can live in your heart today. He can live in your life today. He can put the mess back in order again. Oh, I preach to someone here today that you see no hope in your situation. You have no reason to live for. You have no reason to rejoice today on the surface. But I tell you, within your life is great potential. And God wants to bring that potential out. He wants to shine his light in the darkness he wants to put it back together again I'm thankful for the power of light today 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9 but ye are a chosen generation a royal priesthood and holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Oh, I tell you today, we've been called out of the darkness. That darkness is ever pressing, but light defeats the darkness. Light defeats the darkness. 
In every life today, we've got to have the light of Jesus Christ. We've got to have the light of His Spirit. In order to reach our potential, we've got to have His light to shine. I was not raised in Texas, but uh, I was born in Texas. And, uh, but when I was six years old, my father uh, was elected at a church in Wisconsin. That's halfway across the world, really, almost. And uh, a lot different than Texas. I remember it's different in Wisconsin. I don't. Is anybody here from Wisconsin? No. Anybody ever been to Wisconsin? Okay, a few. <clears throat> they have snow in Wisconsin, and not just here and there. I'm talking. It'll start in October, and it doesn't go away till March or April or later sometimes. And and uh, they talk a little different in Wisconsin. And uh, they say some things that kind of sound like they're talking like this or something. I can't do it anymore because I've lost that accent and got back to Texas. But uh, uh, things are different up there. And uh, so it was an adjustment. Uh, I was, I believe, six years old when we moved there. And the church had already purchased some property to build a new building on. And so when my father got there, they just began to start on the building. And uh, the city of Wausau, Wisconsin is very unique. There's a lake in the middle of the town. And then on one side is Rib Mountain. And it's the highest point in the state, I believe. And uh, it looks, from the air, it looks like a big rib. And uh, it's a big mountain. They have a ski resort on top of it. And uh, uh, we lived about a probably a mile from that place so we could go skiing all the time. Anybody ever been snow skiing? All right, all right. And uh, so anyway, just, just some different things about, uh, about Wausau. But, uh, so Rib Mountain on one side, the valley with a lake in the middle, and then on the other side was a large hill, kind of a rolling hill. And the church was built on the top of that hill. And so... Uh, they put a steeple on top of the building and they lighted the steeple. And it was amazing because anywhere you went at nighttime or even sometimes during the day, anywhere you went, it, I remember seeing it skiing on the top of that mountain or maybe anywhere in, in that city, you could look up and you could see the light of that steeple shining. I tell you today, there's a dark world. It's full of evil. It's full of sin. It's full of problems and circumstance. But they're looking for something. They're searching for something. They've tried everything they know to try. They've gone to every program they know to try. They've, they've tried churches. They've tried uh, every, every kind of program the government can offer. But they're looking for something to give them a point of direction so that in their darkness they can see the light. Today I want to tell you, you have that light. It's the Spirit of God. It's the work of God. It can do more in an instant of time than we could do in a lifetime. We've got to have the power of God working in us. And there's power here today. I don't know what you've come with. I don't know every situation. I, I, I can't tell you everything about your life, but there's one in this place that knows. He knows what you said last night before you went to bed. He knows what was on your heart this morning when you woke up. He knows those things about you that you don't want anybody else to know. He knows. And in the midst of all that, He loves us and cares for us enough that He would give His life that we might be free. He's in this house today. I wonder, would you stand with me right now? We've heard the word of God preached today. And his presence is in this house. And what we need now is for the spirit of God to move in our lives. Some of you here today, you've received the gift of the Holy Spirit maybe years ago. There's others. Perhaps you've never, never, ever spoken tongues like they did in the book of Acts. But could I tell you it's a promise? It's a gift. 
It's the presence of God that wants to dwell in your life. The Bible says if we would repent of our sins, if we'd ask God to forgive us of all of the bad stuff we've done, and we'd turn away from those things and, and do our best to live right, and then if we would be baptized in the name of Jesus, just like they were in the book of Acts, it's a promise that we shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit and that's God's Spirit coming to live inside of us. Today, there may be some of you, you want to receive that for the first time. There may be some others that you've had the gift of the Holy Spirit for a long time, but it's been too long since you prayed in tongues. It's been too long since you had a refilling of the Holy Ghost. It's been too long since you had that breakthrough. But could I tell you today, as darkness is advancing and the enemy is trying to defeat, there is a power that's greater than anything in this world. And it's the power of the light of truth. And God wants to reach to your heart today. In closing this morning, I wonder if you'd let the Spirit of God work. God's a gentleman. He's not going to force himself upon us. But on the other hand, when we come with an open heart and say, God, forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of the mess that I've made of things, Lord. And I pray that you would fill my life with your spirit because I want to live for you. Oh, he'll begin to move and he'll begin to put those things back together again. He'll begin to fix those problems. It doesn't mean we'll never have a problem, but now we can trust in him instead of ourselves. As the musicians would come, I wonder if we could gather around this altar today. And whatever you need this morning, I wonder if you'd let God begin to minister. If you need healing, God could heal your body today. If you need a blessing in your family, God can do that this morning. I tell you, God can change people's minds. He can change their very mind and their heart to make it to where... It what, what problem? I can't imagine there was a problem here before because God moved and God worked. I wonder right now, would you come? Would you gather around this altar and let's just begin to open our hearts to Him? Come on, don't bring somebody with you. Don't come alone. Let's allow God to minister and to work in our life today. Lord, I want Your light to shine in me. I want your power to work in me. I need your help today. I can't make it without you, but I've got to have your strength. I've got to have your touch. I've got to have your help today. In the name of Jesus, come on, that's it. Would you open your heart to the Lord today? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, I've made a mess of things. But I pray that you would minister. I pray that you would work in me, God, that you would make a way in my life. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. I need you, Lord. I need you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Have your way in me today. Have your way in me today. Come on, the Lord's moving. Come on, God's working. Would you open your heart to Him right now? Come on, would you just take that step of faith and respond this morning? In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name.